Good morning and welcome on this second Sunday of the Easter season. Following the sad death this last week of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, we will keep just a time of silence, uh, followed by two short prayers at the start of this Eucharist. And so, for those for whom it is possible, can I invite you please now to stand for one minute silence. Let us pray. God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for the love he shared among us and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn, especially the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises of resurrection and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ our Lord give us peace. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We give them back to you, dear Lord, for you gave them to us. Yet, as you did not lose them in giving, so we have not lost them by their return. For not as the world gives do you give her, O lover of souls. What you give, you do not take away. For what is yours is ours always, if we are yours. For life is eternal, and love is immortal, and death leave only her horizon and her horizon nothing the limit of our sight. Lift us up, strong Son of God, that we may see further. Cleanse our eyes that we may see more clearly. Draw us closer to yourself, that we may know ourselves nearer to our loved ones who are with you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turn now to our order of service. And to our first hymn.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life in heaven. And let's praise Jesus on the God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light in the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, on this second Sunday of the Easter season, a time when we need to hear again the message of good news of our sharing risen life with Christ, a life which continues beyond the grave. We pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In baptism we died with Christ so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, Lord hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, forgive us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, forgive us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory in the highest to the God of heaven. Peace, Peace to all your people, good and earth be given. Mighty God and Father, thanks and praise be you. Sing, Sing hallelujahs to our heavenly King. Jesus Christ is risen, God the Father's Son, with the Holy Spirit, you are Lord alone. Lamb once killed for sinners, all our guilt to bear. Show us your mercy, now and receive our prayer. Christ, the world's true Saviour, High and Holy One, seated now and reigning from your Father's throne. Lord and God, we praise you. Highest heaven adores in the Father's glory. All the praise be yours. Now the collect for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. 
and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have our gradual hymn. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, glory to you, O Lord. We stand for the reading of the Gospel. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe 
that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I was reminded on the radio this morning that the Duke of Edinburgh had certain opinions about sermons. <laughs> he said, the mind cannot absorb what the backside cannot endure. <laughs> I take my own warning. I am sure that you will be surprised even shocked to hear that my devastatingly funny stories about events in my clerical life have not always been appreciated. Indeed, when returning to the family after a hard day out in the parish and recounting some non-confidential but self-deprecating and amusing story to my wife and to my then two teenage daughters about something which may have happened that day, one of the girls would turn to the other and would comment, I think you had to be there. <laughs> this sadly became a frequent put down by the family and my grandson, I regret to say, has followed in this tradition of making that remark, I think you had to be there when I have told some very funny account that is of something that has happened to me. And of course, in this last year, we've all experienced what it means not to be able to be somewhere, either on sad occasions or indeed on joyful ones we have missed being there we have missed out we feel slightly aggrieved john in this morning's gospel makes the opposite point you don't have to be there he tells us that is, you don't actually have to have witnessed the resurrection yourself in order to have faith in Christ. By the time John was writing, decades after the life and death and resurrection of Christ, many, of course, of the apostolic band and other followers and witnesses had been martyred or had died from natural causes. John, in his Gospel, wanted us to understand, especially as he got towards the end of his Gospel, that what mattered was what you believe in Jesus of Nazareth, what you believe about Jesus of Nazareth. Believing in Jesus of Nazareth, that's what matters, not being present at a particular place and time. Thomas, we heard in this morning's reading, missed out at the first appearance of Christ to the, the disciples in the room where they were gathered because they were afraid. Afraid of the Jewish and the Roman authorities, yes. And also feeling a little bit uncertain about each other. Guilt, sadly, and often unnecessarily, plays a part in bereavement. But the apostles would have been aware that they hadn't exactly covered themselves in glory over the previous few days. One, no longer around, had handed him over. Their leader had denied knowing Jesus when the chips were down, and they all fled. Apart, it seems, from John 
who has stood at the foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and the other women who had shown a bit more courage than the men. The little apostolic band might also have been a little wary and fearful of what their resurrected Lord would have to say to them. Thank God, literally, they would have thought, when he came with a message of peace and indeed a new commission for them to make disciples. Thomas the Twin is an interesting character. John tells us about him on three occasions. Once when Jesus is talking of going into dangerous territory where they could all be at risk, it is Thomas who states, come, let us go with him, that we may die with him. There is evidence of a certain style of dogged discipleship in Thomas. Then, of course, when Jesus tells them of the Last Supper, that his followers know the way to the place where he is going, Thomas makes the very valid point that as they don't know where he is going, how can they possibly know the way? I am reminded of a comment of one senior army officer about another more junior colleague. The men would follow this officer anywhere, mainly out of a sense of curiosity. <laughs> Thomas liked things to be clear and straight. He wasn't so much doubting as questioning. And if he did doubt Jesus' resurrection, his main problem, I think, was to do with trusting his fellow apostles who hadn't shown themselves of late to be that trustworthy or men of their word. After a long ministry, serving on and sometimes chairing PCCs, synods, chapter meetings and other diocesan bodies and having been a school governor for donkey's years, there is often someone who asks the question towards the end of a long meeting that you were hoping wouldn't be asked. Not because you had anything to hide, but the rest of us just wanted to go home. And this latest question was going to get us riding off in all directions for another half an hour. Thomas, bless him, could have been that sort of person. He could have been like some of my former parishioners, who I am sure when Jesus had completed the Sermon on the Mount, if they had been present then, would have asked, yes, Jesus, but does it coincide with our parish priorities, our mission action plan? Or they would have stated, your sermon was all very well, but we haven't actually budgeted for this kingdom project. And have you done a risk assessment? But the church does need people who, like Thomas and my former parishioners, ask such questions. More importantly, we need to ask questions ourselves if our faith is to grow. Doubt can be paralyzing, but wrestling with our faith and maintaining our discipleship can be an important way we grow in our faith and trust. Thomas is a man who will not act until he is convinced. You can trust him because he won't take anything for granted, nor will he pretend to have a faith he doesn't have. But once on side, he will die for what he believes in and the love he has for his Lord and God as indeed Thomas did. Thanks to Thomas, we are made aware that even the victorious and resurrected Christ still carries the wounds of the cross. These wounds seem to challenge that great response of Thomas, my Lord and my God, a crucified and suffering God. It seems impossible 
Yet this is what John wants us to hear. I may have quoted these lines by Edward Schiller to, to you before, but they are so pertinent today in our mad and COVID-infected world, so I make no apology for repeating them. The other gods were strong, but thou wast weak. They rode, but you stumbled to a throne. But to our wounds, only God's wounds can speak, and not a God has wounds, but thou alone. Not a God has wounds, but thou alone. It was, of course, from this vulnerable little group of men and women, the Christian Church grew despite their persecution and suffering. Even as they were being carted off to be martyred, tortured or imprisoned, they believed that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. They believed that they shared in Christ's resurrection. And they believed that the spirit of the risen Christ would lead them and the church to glory. You don't die and suffer for something you believe might have just been a happy ending story added to Christ's life and passion. No wonder Tertullian remarked that the blood of the martyrs was the seed of the church. Although goodness knows they had their differences, nevertheless, they were bound together by love. As we heard in this morning's reading from Acts, they so loved one another, they shared the common life. For they knew that truth not only has to be believed, it has to be lived, so that the world might believe. These early Christians believed, as St Paul says in his letter to the church in Rome, Words that we need to hear and which may bring some comfort to the royal family and all those who mourn the passing of Prince Philip. You see, they believed that they were more than conquerors through him who loved us. For neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate them from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now let us declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the light of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in the presence of the risen Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. May we witness to your resurrection. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ of differing traditions and denominations. We pray for Pope Francis and for the Roman Catholic community. We pray for the Reformed and Protestant churches and their leaders. And we pray for our own Anglican Communion, for Justin and Stephen, our Archbishops. We pray too for John, Bishop of Selby, Father, we pray for this parish, this benefice. We give thanks for all those who are providing leadership here during this time of vacancy. We pray for those responsible for caring for each other and for this community at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Fathers, we pray for this nation, we pray for our Queen and all the royal family in their bereavement. We thank you for the life of Prince Philip, for his sense of duty and loyalty, the support he has provided for Her Majesty the Queen. We pray for all in our society who have died as a result of the COVID epidemic. And we give you thanks for all who have served and cared for others. We pray for those who work in the healing and caring professions and for all those who work in other professions whose contribution to our national life has become more apparent during this time of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, Fathers, we pray for this community, we pray for all those who contribute to its local life, for those who represent us in local government, for those concerned with our schools, teachers, students, and governors, and other members of staff. We pray for our young people in this parish. We pray too for the many charities and organizations which exist within this community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray and bring to mind those who are sick. May they know your healing power 
had your victory on the cross and the new life that you offer. May they know your peace and grace. We pray especially for those known to us and for their families. We pray for those in care homes, for those who feel isolated. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, Lord, and Father, we remember all whom we have known and loved, but see no longer. We commend them to your love. And with them and with all your saints, throughout the ages. We commend ourselves to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sort of restricted sign of peace as we are best able in these times.
When the supper was empty, he took the cup of wine. Again he prayed to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we gain with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life which comes to salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has Christ has risen. Christ has come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour upon your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. We forgive us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Spare of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, have us to peace. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you with eternal life. Let's pray. Lord God, our heart, through our Saviour Jesus. You have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with you. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when you were still far off, you may have seen your son So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the blessing and our final hymn, will you please stand while we play one verse of the national anthem? God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. And thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. You know I mentioned earlier about when you want to go home and somebody all raises a question or brings up a piece of business. Well, God's sense of humour means I've got to do that now. Would you please be seated? This concerns, and I know you will be fascinated by this, the notice of the suspension of presentation. Mission and Pastoral Measure 2011, Section 85. To all persons to whom these presents shall come, I, John Romulo Thompson, by divine permission, Bishop Suffragan of Selby, delegate for this purpose, appointed by the most reverent and right honorable Father in God, Stephen Jeffrey, by divine providence, Lord Archbishop of York, Primate of England and Metropolitan, send greeting. Whereas the benefice of Bishop Thorpe in the Diocese of York is vacant, whereas I have consulted with the interested parties, now I hereby declare that subject to the provisions of the above-mentioned measure, the patrons shall not exercise their right of presentation to the said benefits for a period of up to five years, date from the 30th day of March 2021, to sign Cross John Selby and dated the 30th of March in the year of our Lord 2021. And I have to sign that it was duly published. Um, I'm not sure I had to read it out actually, but I thought I'd better play on the safe side. <laughs> I make sure I fulfill all the requirements. Um, so thank you for waiting for that additional piece of necessary legal work. You are now 